It Isn't Far From London by S.P.B. Mays. The reason for our walking may be the utilitarian one of trying to keep physically fit, the material one of cheapness, or the spiritual one of searching for beauty, but the result is the same. Once we have exchanged the smell of petrol for that of freshly ploughed earth, the noise of traffic for the song of the lark, the rudeness of jostling, scowling crowds of strangers for the jovial courtesy of the friendly countrymen, we shall one and all undergo a sea change. The search for the country is the search for beauty, which is undoubtedly the most necessary search in man's life. We walk to commune with our own souls and be still. Quite genuinely, we are afraid to be alone with ourselves. The cry of the age is for distraction. Now, distraction is precisely what we do not want, if by distraction we mean a turning away from reality. Fear was never yet conquered by turning one's back. That there are still demons to be exorcised, I should be the last to deny. But I do suggest that the way to exorcise them is not to rush into a crowd and pretend that they aren't there, but to go out into the open country and there face them and wrestle as Jacob wrestled. Alone in the country, we can readjust our attitude to the continuity of things and realize how literally we are a part of the earth, our mother. We are too easily depressed and frightened by the trappings and the suits of woe. On the hillside, death loses much of its terror and becomes the reunion with something that we can only dimly sense, something that has in it far more of the glorious than the dreadful. There's a place called Egypt, is that on your map? Yeah. <laughs> well, there you are, you see. We come out of Hedgeley, cross the road where the yew tree is, into Egypt. And, uh, you can't, that's, that'll be on your old map, Egypt, I should think. That you're looking at somewhere. Yeah. Hedgley Church in view. Does, does, um, are we beginning to get into the territory of sort of radical non conformism? Yes, you're right in the Quakerism. middle. Quakerism. Yes, this is it. This is the heartland of that. We're going to have to really push on if we're going to make it to, to uh, Jordan's. We don't really know how far it is doing it. I don't think it's very far actually. Probably about three or four miles. Yeah, we can, yeah, we can do we it. Might walk the last um, mile or so in um, darkness. Would be all right. Yeah. We're making our way up this lane in the dusk. Me complaining about my sore knee. Nick just tired. And it. I'm going to badly paraphrase. Uh, Gray, isn't there a line in Gray's elegy about the ploughman wearily making his way home over the fields? Mm-hmm. And here we are. There's the church. Is that Hedgley Church? Yep. Yeah. Oh, we go straight across the road, John. And the lane. Yeah. We found ourselves now walking parallel to the M40 with its orange lights. Like a sort of runway that's going to take us into land at Beaconsfield. now limping quite badly with my left leg. Now we've had to strike out, you know, using a mixture of instinct map and into sort of unknown and potentially dangerous territory. As I say, as a boy, in the summer holidays from school, we used to ride our bikes up there, Windsor Hill from Wooden Green, on by the Fat School, and then turn down and go down Pumpkin Hill, as they call it, and up. There you go. And then we're ringing the old bells at Christmas time. Old Kelly and his dad used to. Well, they were ringing the bells. We were knocking them old cocks off their roosters. I can imagine it. 